pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Frank and Harley, that was easy enough. Yeah, nobody online. Yeah, here's Bob comes scrolling in. Mm -hmm. Nobody online yet, but if you see anybody, I can't really see. Right. Okay. Maybe I'll put my glasses on. I can't really he's, see because he's coming of the... just in time. Bob? To make a big motion. To, to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the yes. only the only thing you added was a executive session tonight for labor yes. relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Approval of the minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll move we approve the minutes from last meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Any announcements? Nope. Don't um, need yeah, actually. The two positions that are available, or the available positions for the highway department have been posted. Um, they have been posted around town. There's been a flyer that's gone out and they've been posted online and they've gone out to the papers. So just an announcement mm -hmm. for the minutes and everything that there are available positions for the highway department. They have been posted online. Good. Zoning administrator? Um, yes. So I think I think, yeah, this came from Nancy. Uh, so it's the quote for the printer and scanner. Uh, they'd like the 36 inch size. The desire is to have the one that Dorset has as feedback on that model has been very positive. Fallback position is the TM300 MFP at $7,787. The 36 inch wide one that they'd like is $10,164. We can get additional quotes if required. However, an internet, uh, internet search yielded similar pricing. It is considerably more than expected, but we need it and prices have taken a big jump in the past two years. And that's from Nancy. So here's the quote for that. We can trade our other one in for one that does both. <laughs> I wonder if we can rent it out to other people when we don't need it. <laughs> like the historical society might want to scan big things. I think that that's what Nancy said last time that other people wanted it and it would there would be a charge per uh -huh. use for it. So yeah. I don't know that you would recuperate. <laughs> well, no, definitely not but. worth of uses. But I do know that it's something that mm -hmm. it's available in Dorset, but it's not widely available in this area. So people might come down to use it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. And print three flat. It's its own printer. I mean, sorry, it's its own computer. Its own computer. Is that new? Is that we got that computer there? Two grand more. It has a fifteen-inch touch. I'm not talking screen. to it. So if it doesn't have a touch screen, you'd have to run it for me. Oh. oh. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes. I'm multitasking. That's it. Two computers. I mean, I think we should get something. Maybe we want to decide yeah. next time which one Maybe. we want to get. Yeah. Give us time to think about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely believe that we do need, we do need that. 
to uh, to help facilitate a lot of the okay. activity that goes on through this office. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's I don't know on that. For, Carly, you have a comment or a uh, question? Um, do we lease or buy? I think we lease that. That one is leased. Yeah, because we voted on that last year when the old one got done with its lease and we had to bring in the new one. I see. Um, so uh, that's a pretty high, high priced piece of equipment there. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious if the company leases things like, uh, you know, other well, if we if we, could, if we could lease this kind of equipment, I don't know. We could ask Nancy to get with Deb and see if that company leases this kind of equipment. I doubt they do, or she might have looked it up, but. Well, turns out I have a friend that's a copy repair man. Are you gonna to talk to your contact? Yeah, Okay. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll talk to him before the next meeting and see what, what he's, uh, what he knows about it out in the field if he mm -hmm. if they get involved in this big stuff like this and I think they do yeah but he's actually been a copy yeah. repair man for as long as we've been out of high school one thing that will let us do is scan and print like the large maps and things which mm -hmm. right now we have to rely on Rutland Regional Planning Commission to do them for us and we were out of luck last year for a while their person who does maps they didn't have someone I will ask Deb and Nancy, or Nancy, to get with, connect with Deb and see if we can, see if that is an option. If, if Elise, Elise is an through option. that other company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's do a little bit more research. And honestly, it, it may be a better option to see if we could lease something like that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we buy it for 10 years, you know, and we ain't going to want to buy another one for 10 years, but by then it'll be so incredibly out of date. Yeah. That. All right. Anything from the Planning Commission? Um, I don't have anything um, from the Planning Commission meeting, but I did attend um, the rail trail meeting, and I could just give a little quick report That'd on that. Great. Um, Frank Nelson was also there, and Bruce Surjane was there as well. Um, so this was a meeting held, um, was that last Wednesday? Yeah, by, at, by the Rutland Regional Planning Commission. And it was for the idea of getting together a DNH Rail Trail Council. So right now the Rail Trail is run by VTrans. And, what, and they have done this with the Lamoille Trail, which is up north. And the idea is that every town that the trail runs through, and by the way, this would include Granville in New York, because they're hoping to hook up the trail with, so that people can go all the way from, um, from Castleton and Poultney on down through New York, which they can't do right now. So each town would get a representative to this rail trail council, and then this council would be responsible for making a bunch of the decisions about the rail trail in general and for not 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 for maintaining it because that would still be up to VTrans but some of the larger scale things about like programming and policies about use of the rail trail um, so this meeting was just to start this process and we looked a little bit at some potential um, language we didn't even really get into bylaws yet but eventually when so there's going to be another meeting in a month eventually when this happens two weeks two weeks, Every two weeks. was it two weeks okay well i haven't checked my email about that yet but there will be another meeting and once this is all up and rolling um paulette will probably need to appoint somebody to be on the representation to this kind of like how we appoint someone to go to the rutland regional planning commission and there also might be, depending on how it's set up, there might be a local small group, which would be like the Paulette Regional Rail Trail people, which could be called various things, and the, the people who really want to volunteer with the rail trail. And then they might, from that group, decide on who's going to go and talk to the rail trail council. So that was basically what I got out of it. 
I stay a little late and clarify some stuff. Mm -hmm. B-trans is offloading a lot, a bunch of work to Rutland Regional, who's going to do administration. We'll do the grant work and all that heavy, heavy lifting, and then you'll have volunteer group with an attaché to the select board to the town somehow there to be coming up with stuff. But the execution, they've had this fall apart because people ended up doing everything and it burned them out. And so they've separated the workload. So the Planning Commission, Rutland Regional will be doing part of the workload. So as these meetings continue, you'll keep us yeah, abreast of what's going on. Yeah, I will keep you abreast of what's going on. It's seven. very much in the beginning phase. I think it's, it seems like there's a lot of energy behind this mm -hmm. and especially a lot of energy for trying to hook up the section that's in New York that currently runs through land that they can't d use. Yeah, because yeah. Um, some of the people who are getting, who, who showed up for this meeting are people with various um, like snowmobiling groups mm -hmm. yeah. and they use it a lot. Um, some people who are with VAST showed up and some people in New York who are with a New York snowmobiling group. And they would love to be able to snowmobile the whole thing. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, so I will keep everybody abreast. Also make available their trail spurs because uh, they can travel by snowmobile. One of the guys was talking about it on trails out into the Midwest and way up into Maine from through this this connection they want. So they want everything connected uh, and this Granville Rail Trail piece connected. It was the Daigle and the, and the um, Granville uh, club, snowmobile club, and then Linendahl from Salem, and these people. But apparently, okay. when, so, you do this by, yes. when you do this by as bicycle, we get this coming together a little bit more, we'll touch on these subjects. But they showed a map, and the, and Thank the biggest you. lacking is the New York State link, which would increase the traffic through West Paul and the overall rail trail that right. exists now. And do we, this is an do we have a road foreman's report? Yes, we got some pricing on salt. <clears throat> Uh, we got a price from American Rock Salt, which is the salt we got last year for $78 a ton picked up. And then we got a price from Appalachie Salt, which is really good quality salt stored inside, delivered for $89.50 a ton. And in my mind, I think that, especially with the health issue, that's just, they have very good quality salt. Last year we had salt with water running out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, would the other salt be delivered or not? No, we had to pick that up. And okay, so it would almost pay for itself with delivery, given the price of gas. And it's stored inside. Yeah. I mean, that's priceless for, for you guys to be scooping yeah. salt that's not frozen. Just the and chunks. Blocking and, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I spoke, he called me this afternoon, and the guy from Appalachia, um, and the price is... I asked about whether the price needed to be locked in if we need it. They said for quantity, if we, that's what we estimated around 320 to 350 tons based off of numbers from previous years. So he said, if that's the quantity, great. If we need less, that's fine. If we need more, that's fine. The price is the price. Um, they don't do any formal lock-ins, but they're a family business and they want to help us out. And, um, so the price will be what it will be, and they could do delivery starting in like three to five days from when we secure it and order it. So. And that price in 40 and fluctuates a lot too, doesn't it? Uh, no, it would be locked in. It would, it yeah. would be locked in for us. Okay. Yeah, and we have to go pick it up. Right. You know, two things, we're short on help right. to go pick it up, and the second thing is you know, it's out in the elements. When it rains, it snows. Exactly. It's, you yep. know, it's mm -hmm. chunky. And you guys struggled with, with chunks last year. And if you bring it in wet and it gets really cold, it, it freezes over. And um, I, I mean, think that financially, it, it, it really doesn't make sense for that kind of money. Was it $10 a ton to yeah. drive our trucks over there and get 15 tons? And that's a lot of wear and tear on our trucks for that's not money well spent. Mm -hmm. I would Last say. year there was it was a significant savings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it made yeah. sense. But this but year's a, so a better close. quality salt. Yeah, it's going to work better for you. You're going to use less of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every, yeah. every way around we'd win. Yeah. Well okay. then, we sh if yeah. we're agreed, we should just go with yeah. that Appalachie. That's what I say. 
Was that a motion? Do we have to make Sounded a motion it. for this? Or? Yeah, I, so I would like to, if you, don't, if you all don't mind, only because I was trying to look back to mm -hmm. figure out what we did last in previous years, and there's a lot of discussion of salt, but there was never motions made with prices, mm -hmm. so it is helpful to go back um, so if we could just meet, if we could do that, that would be helpful for me. I'll second that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And if you want to put the price in there, Kristen, it was eighty nine fifty delivered. Right? Delivered. Delivered. Can't go wrong there. No, I think it'll work a lot better. Is there anything else to report? Um, I talked with Ralph Sheldon. In regards to the trucks, there's uh, they need to be gone through. Yeah. The equipment needs to be gone through. Final drives need to be checked. Fluids need to be checked. They need to be serviced and inspected. The trucks need to be inspected. Uh -huh. So we're going to have him come in, in the ne over the next couple of weeks and try and go through you know one truck at a time, one piece of equipment when he has an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Get the oil changed. Um, just get him ready for the winter mm -hmm. and then get some inspection stickers put on them yeah. um, what else we met with rick yeah. last week mm -hmm. at the highway garage the town garage um and just began to talk about um what his priorities are so roadside mowing is what he'll be focusing on immediately and then talked about just continuing in order to maintain communication with him and help to give him guidance as we're searching for more staff there. Um, there will be weekly check-ins with Rick just to make sure that he knows what he's up to and we, you know, so as the board decides what might need to happen, you know, he'll be able to inform us and then the board can relay anything back to him each week just so that he's feeling supported. Um, What's his status? So he, you know, was ori he originally signed on to be a part-time temporary person for us as we were finding somebody, and now he's the last person standing full-time <laughs> in the highway department, and he's ready to retire. So I think he recognizes the position that we're in, but is is anticipating that he will want to move on once we are yeah, able to find some staff. Yeah, I was just curious if he had given any idea of when. No, he's, I don't so think he's, he's going to hang, he made it he's gonna hang around yeah. until. Yeah. You know, okay. He w doesn't That's want us to drag our feet, which we're not doing. No. Um, so, so that was good. Oh, and then um, paving. Yes, that's right. So I talked with Tom Wilson um, in regards to Tommy Fuller is going to pave some sections of 153 for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where Tom wants to start at the Rupert Paul, West Pollet line. Uh, I guess the road is bad. I'm not familiar with this section of road, but Tom would like to come back. I don't know if it was 100 feet or a couple hundred feet. There's a really bad section of road on Pollitts, mm -hmm. and it may even have been a little longer section than that, and asked if we would uh, cover that section, mm -hmm. and he said it'd be around $4,000. I said I'd bring it up to the board. And then in the meantime, I talked to Tom about paving over that section of road that we had dug out by the dump mm -hmm. um, or by where the road caved in. He's willing to do that at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Tom didn't have a price for tonight's meeting uh, for that, but he said he would get the price uh, before, I think, Thursday of this week for oh. that section. And then that, it's just something that has to get done. And he's going to be mobilized in the area anyway, so it's going to. It's going to be cheaper than anybody oh, else. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that section that Rupert would like for us to do, need, you know, Tom said it really needs to be done. And you know, we're not going to have we're not going to get somebody to come in and do a short little section. Mm -hmm. So we we should have that done, in my opinion, get that done, and and uh, that'll be that'll be fixed. And it's on a corner. Um, you're, I'm sure you're familiar Is with it? that. Right See, it goes, the line is actually past where we turn around a little bit there on that corner. So okay. it may be so to come back all the way to the turnaround. I'll be to Mark's parking spot there. Yeah. So and I, I, I don't really pay that much attention the last time I came through it, mm -hmm. but it's been a while. Well, my guess is if he's going to pave Rupert's, he'll raise that up through that corner, and then all of a sudden it would drop off. 
on the R's and, and not be good in that sweeping corner there. Yeah, so. that's not a good place mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. Right, so it probably <laughs> would make sense to build it up the whole length through that corner. Even even without checking, I can't believe that they would steer us wrong. You know, I, I, I'm, no, I I'm putting a lot of faith in them because we've worked together quite well yeah. for many, many years. And, and Tom even said, he said, hey, look, you know, if the board can't agree on it, do you mind if we just pave it and we'll pay for it? And and that's not right in yeah, my mind. Right. I mean, they it really they want to make sure it gets done, you know, whether we're willing right. to pay for it or not. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like what Bob said to make yeah. sure it's all so it sounds get like all the way around that corner. Yeah, all the way. I'm, I'm Bob just made that motion that we pay that we have that paving done with when Rupert's paving to make that road better. I'll second that. Any more discussion? Just to, so you're aware for the budget, I checked in with Julie, and so the in the paving budget right now, there's it was on a safety you know, note. It's like yeah. ninety something. Ninety nine. Seventy one. So the idea, Julie just wanted everybody to be aware of the fact that with the paving budget, originally there was discussions of having part of it go to the truck upfit and then the other part be set aside for the bridge project potentially, but with not putting it towards the bridge or I mean we could shave four thousand dollars I'm sure but even so if we were to just do the truck upfit and not put that towards the bridge there's still sixty thousand in the account so there is money to do it we just need to make Julie aware so I did ask her and I gave her the heads up that that's something that you'd be discussing now what was the sixty thousand that's what would that's what will remain in the paving budget with just using it for the truck upfit and not the bridge you mean after taking the money out for the paving no there's there's sixty thousand available to for paving is what i'm saying does that make sense okay <coughs> okay so we have a motion on the floor all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed carried mm -hmm. I have one thing I wanted to bring up in Road Foreman's report um, regarding Highway 153. So in the West Paulette Master Plan, there was a suggestion about that intersection, the one in West Paulette, that evidently is one that got brought up quite some time ago and was in some records that exist. So I'm not sure if VTrans had originally come up with that idea or if we came up with that idea. But my question is, if we want to in the future move forward with that idea of making upgrades to that intersection mm -hmm. in West Paulette, what's our first step toward it? Because probably, because I'm still a little unsure about what the status is of us doing things with that road because it's kind of a state road but it's kind of ours. Like obviously if Rupert's paving it, so it's up to us if we want to pave it. Mm -hmm. But if we want to change it, do we have to, we have to involve VTrans, right? Is that true? I, I don't know, that's yeah. why I'm asking. So yeah. the last, I guess last year or so, who was it, Chris Taft, I think I talked to, mm -hmm. and he said mm -hmm. that right. plan was made back when the old engineers worked for the state, which yeah. was like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. and and he was a senior engineer and he came up and, and looked at Nelson Blanchard was his name and looked it looked it over. They came up with those scenarios. Deck went down that Clarence Decker and Keith and uh -huh. and went over and looked at some scenarios with them. And and they, they put those scenarios out. Yeah. Then when I talked to Chris Taft he says, uh, pretty much that's all on you, whatever you wanna do. But more than likely we'd have to have it designed. Yeah. So um, the person you talked to was Chris Taft? So I talked to Patrick Wilson. I can oh, give he, you his he contact. Because be. cause Chris Taft now runs the show, and Patrick Wilson is our... Patrick Wilson is our contact? Yeah. Okay. Um, and there might be grants. There probably are. I mean, I'm similar wondering. to the grants that we've gotten for this intersection mm -hmm. here. So I think that he would be the one to talk to. I can give you his contact. Thank name. you. Yeah. It's, it's going to change because the design, one of the designs is a change involving a, a rail trail change in conjunction with the intersection change. So that would all be one thing. Yeah, and since VTrans now runs the rail trail rather than some other organization, it's probably going to be a little easier to 
um, tie the two together. But yeah, I just mm -hmm. wanted to know who to yeah. talk to about about that. Anything else to be brought up under the road foreman's report? It's not. Okay. Anything from the assessors? No. Anything from the town clerk? Yes. Uh, okay. So, from Deb, uh, FYI, the speed sign on Rupert Mountain Road is not functioning. That's exciting. Um, I have received a quote from Mountain Telecom Inc. for a replacement phone system. I have provided the proposed quote, but I have some questions. I'm going to give those all to you guys. It looks like there's two. There's an email from A&R, and then the quote is on the bottom. Um, I've provided the proposed quote, but I have some questions that I need to ask, such as why four phone units? We have five, so that's something that I need to clear up. We have been on the same system since before I started in 2008, so I have no idea what to look for. Seems this system is compatible with online apps, etc. I'm not sure how I feel about feel about that when our goal is to become more secure. Any suggestions on phone systems that you may have current experience with would be welcome. Email from ANRENB with regard to activity within our town. Ad for Foreman has been placed with the Rutland Herald and put out to emails and social media. Have a good evening. Respectfully submitted, Deb. So I was looking at the quote and something I noticed is that I think they do have quoted us for five phones on this final page. It just says quantity one and it lists that as 110 and then it says quantity four and lists those as 135. So I do think they've quoted us for five phones. They just did it in a weird way. Okay. But I don't really know anything about business phones. Uh, yeah. So I can't really help there. A base charge and then form. Four more in the one videos. phone and then the rest of them they they get you a little bit harder mm -hmm. yeah now what I don't understand is would this also cover the phone service or is this just for like renting the phone product it's just what belongs in here I so think. they'd still have to pay to VTEL. VTEL for the phone service because I was like this 134 is real cheap for phone service for five phones I personally don't think that the being compatible with apps is a problem because if we don't want to use the apps, we don't have to use them. Also, everything's compatible with apps these days. What's the price they're talking um, The one-time price is 1206 for the equipment and the installation, and then it would be 134 monthly. That's for five phones. Why the monthly? Monthly user license includes cloud PBX with unlimited local and long distance calling. Oh, maybe the, no, so it maybe it like isn't it is included. Connect up to five phone devices, including mobile and desktop apps, team chat, file sharing, video conferencing, engage core, whatever that means. And we would be locked into a three year contract. I guess it would be worthwhile finding out if this actually does include the phone service and if we'd still have to contract with VTEL. Because if that includes the phone service, like I said, that's really good. Wait, are we using VTEL for computers? For the, did you add it in? Mm -hmm. just, but that doesn't give us a internet service through the phone, right? That's just phone. It says yeah. unlimited local and long distance calling. Right, but it wouldn't be the internet. Are we getting internet through VTEL now? Yeah. Right? It's either um, VTEL or Comcast. Yeah. I mean, the internet would have to be VTEL because it's the only good internet here. And our internet is fast. So then we still have a, a VTEL bell Lightning fast. for the internet service, right? Yeah. On top of this phone service. But I mean, right now, if we have... Um, the phone would be separate from the internet anyhow, I think. Okay. It might be worth finding out what we have now and how much it costs to compare it. Question. 
Yes. Our current phone service is with VTEL. Has VTEL been asked about, um, do they provide hardware? They provide hardware for internet. Um, I was wondering if they provide hardware for phone systems in commercial, uh, you know, government facilities. I have to say. So I guess we got some more questions. When you're done. Oh, I'm ready. Are you able to jot down some of these questions for us so we I've can? I've already done it. Okay, you got them all. You got them all jotted down so we can ask. Yes. Them. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frank. I installed phone systems in the past in computer networks for bigger businesses, and uh, the two you have classes you have to have your proprietary PBX, which is their own software, their own hardware, their own phones. And they talk amongst themselves. One of the problems is, is once that phone system becomes dead, or they don't make them anymore, then you have to replace the whole damn thing. And they came up with a new system that is uh, open source based, and many companies sell phones for them. And you run off of a main switching computer, that's how it switches between the offices. It's just a, a computer that switches back and forth. And so different phones will work uh, from that open source model, which means the longevity of the system is is better because if you have a phone go, then you don't have to scrap the whole system. You see, you just get another phone because there's going to be somebody making that open source phone. Right. And, and, and there's companies that would sell that and the service like you're talking about or the PBX and the ser and a service. You have a suggestion for a company? Well, there's, uh, I got a friend of mine that's really into it, I can ask him. Uh, it's been a few years since I've done that, but I was into that. But VTEL, they're providing this the phone's trunk coming in and the internet tr trunk. Then it's okay, computer, so we just after, plug into the At VTEL. the next meeting, we'll have some more answers and then we'll so be the, able to the go the farther with this. switches between the phones. Yeah, but you're not. just plug into the. You're just VTEL. talking in general, no specifics. So well, we'll get some no, more no, information specific, and then we can very go. Very specific. And you could ask VTEL if they have an option. That's what we're going to do. <clears throat> anything else on the town clerk's memo did you look at the ANR thing is that anything that needs I haven't looked at it ANR thing just it mentions An email. That there's a above ground storage uh, and that a decision was reached okay I guess it's the appeal period right now I guess you'd have to go to so their website to see what was decided right okay great and the form of that, so anybody else have any questions? Okay, treasurer's memo. There are two warrants this week. Payroll is 9,453.67. Accounts payable is $1,304,334.18. General fund monies, $1,297,053.55. Highway fund, $9,217.77. Wastewater fund, $5,634.51. This includes the first half payment to Meadowy School District. My most recent communication from Berkshire regarding the truck loan was on Thursday, 914. Quote, rate remains locked in and underwriting is working on wrapping this up. I recommend authorizing myself and one other board member to sign docs when they are ready. Schedule budget meeting. I suggest finding a date in October to start the ball rolling. Tax collection breakdown. 2023 24 levy. Um, 3,946,642.02. Adjustments for homestead and current use credits 7,870.85. Adjustment for homestead and current use increases is zero. State payments 396,295.94. Taxes collected by Treasurer, 1,831,339.29, and the delinquent tax levy is $1,711,135.94. She then goes on to list the 22-23 levy. Um, for reference, it, if half of all property taxes were collected, the remaining levy would be $1,973,000. Sorry. $1,973,321. Um, 
If one quarter of wastewater fees were collected, the remaining levy would be $92,707.50, so we are doing well thus far. The two motions are for payroll warrant 24013 for 9,453.67 and accounts payable warrant 24014 for $1,304,334.18. And that's all from Julie. Who wants to spend that much money? Bob does, he just waved. Bob does, he's a big spender. I'll big second the motion. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Whew. That was a mouthful. <laughs> a lot of numbers. <laughs> a lot of numbers. With Julie for oh, yeah. The truck. Right. Oh. Who, do you, who do you want to nominate? Just nominate Richard. I'll uh, make a motion also that we allow Rich to. Uh, work with Julie on the paperwork and signing the documents when the uh, truck is ready. Uh, truck paperwork is ready for at Berkshire Bank. You good with that, Rich? Yeah, look at this. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'll second that then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, budget meeting. So that's good. There, we're getting got more more than half of our taxes yeah. all paid up on both sides. So. Scheduled budget meeting. Should we do the off week in October when we wouldn't normally meet? One of those. We normally do that. It seems to be the most mm -hmm. functional from what I've experienced. If we just have a meeting that we just come talk about the budget and don't talk about anything else. It doesn't turn into a 11 o'clock meeting. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the 10th or the 24th? You have meetings on the 3rd and the 17th. Later in the month better or earlier? I don't really have a preference. Anyone? Later would be better for me, I think. 24th? Sure. Perfect. I'll do a warning for that. Okay. At 7 p.m. here. Mm -hmm. Emergency management, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Health officer, nothing, right? Uh, Jill did send a She did. Thing. Would you mind bringing that up and reading it, please? I'd love to. Glad you asked. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Was it the one she sent on Sunday? I think so. Are you reading it off your phone? Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm not going to read this whole thing out loud, but I'll talk to you about it. Just so, um, it's July and August DMRs and VTEMS updates from the Pollitt Wastewater Treatment Facility. In addition to performing all compliance, monitoring, and preventative maintenance, the following list highlights events for the period above. And there are things that happened um, all through the July, August, and September, which you all will have in your emails if you wish to read them. If anybody else is dying to know what happened, contact me and I will forward you the email. And you can read it out loud to yourself. Um, outstanding items, working to get transfer switch repaired. Jim helped confirm the password to the equipment. Jim is the, is the electrician. The right hand heater will be addressed after the change in fiscal year by the HVAC tech. One manhole to repair at the top of New Street, which will be done by VTEMS, and controls to update at Spruce Gum Pump Station to get Pump 1 back online with Tim from Avanti, and transponders to replace on, clari transponders to replace on clarifiers with Tim. And I think that's it. Thank you. That's all that we'll, we'll talk about right now. But 
things trudge along at the nice waste summary. wastewater treatment facility. Excellent. Any see, facilities? So there have been a couple more people that have been reaching out about using the auditorium. I've sent out the agreement that we send out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have not heard back from anybody, but lots of people are interested in hosting dancing events. Oh. So well, it's a polish great up your dancing shoes because it's a, great space for dancing. it's a great space for dancing. So I'm ready to receive those agreements back in my email whenever they come. I'm very excited. Super. But nothing really to report. Nothing else. That was just me adding that in. Okay, we just can't. <clears throat> what? You just gotta keep in mind about the not during the two the two units, the the uh, evaporator for this, the upstairs for the heat for upstairs and the heater and the and the wastewater. I do we want to get them? Do we want to get them requoted so we have those numbers in front of us, or yes, so we can keep moving on that now that the taxes mm -hmm. are in and stuff? It's probably might as well get it done. I'll talk mm -hmm. to Jake about that if that's all right with you guys on the on the other committee. I yeah. got some other projects to work on with him anyway, so I'm going to be in contact with him this week. So I'll get him to update the quote for this and the wastewater. Medway Valley School, okay. older unfinished business. I have a few things under older unfinished business. Um, so with, I did forward this email around to all of you. We got officially approved for the Municipal Energy Resilience Program, colloquially known as MERP, which is a great acronym. Love a MERP. Um, so we are going to have assessments done on this building and the town I mean, town hall and the library, and um, Rutland Regional Planning Commission will be scheduling with, um, will be finding the contractor for that and scheduling with us. So I'm the contact person for that. So once we get those assessments done, we will be in the running for the larger amounts of money that are going to be available for grants for um, energy resiliency, which probably means upgrades to the, like, um, either the furnaces or heat pumps or whatever, and also to the building, what they call the building envelope. So if, if things need better in insulation or work on the roof or things like that. So that's how that's coming along. So I have three things. That was no number one. Second one was I got in touch with Devin because we thought he was going to be here last meeting and it was just a big misunderstanding. He thought we were at that meeting going to be voting on whether we wanted to do the municipal assistance or not which we actually voted on back in July. Right, we so already. yeah, we voted a lot. So I, I got back with him and he was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I was mistaken. So he and I are gonna get together this Friday, just us and see what the next steps are. And he will try to find a time to come to a future meeting. So, Super. so that, that's that. And number three was, I brought this up, I think last meeting or the meeting before about the potential of applying for a municipal planning grant in this next cycle, working with Rutland Regional Planning Commission to write it, to see if it's feasible to do any parcels or housing on that town owned lot in West Paulet. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to do that, I need to get with Rutland Regional Planning Commission soon to get started on the writing because it'll be due at the end of October and we need to get a letter from the planning Rutland Regional Planning Commission by the end of September, which is coming up. Um, my recommendation is why not apply for it because then we can find out. I know there were some concerns about whether it was feasible or not, but we'll never know if it's feasible or not if we don't have someone look at it and see if it's feasible. And if they see it's not feasible, we're not really out much of anything. So that's, I'm, that's my, my request is, may I go ahead and start working with them on writing this municipal planning grant? What do you guys, you guys are all? Mm -hmm. I have a comment. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, I've been doing a survey in West Paulet and people do not want to have a residential development in the West Paulet area to be discussed, 100% so far. 
and this was never surveyed in that plan. Michael put it in himself at the end. It was never, the committee never reviewed it. It was never surveyed, nothing ever happened. So I would recommend that before you go uh, spending any effort on it, that you get support of the people in West Pollock for the concept because no one I've talked to have been for it. Kate, Nori, this is only this is only a study. It's not. We're not going to do anything. In the study, they'll clearly do a survey, and then, what, then they'll what, tell us whether what's it's le really feasible or not. really interesting is for this public for this property is an industrial park. Yeah, that's jobs. what this study will tell us. What for jobs, not for residential subdivisions. Well, you know, we could write the grant in such a way as here's this property. We're considering doing housing. Or something else. Look you into what we mentioned years ago that we needed the jobs, and that's in, and, and we needed a place like what what what. Uh, so that's why we do a study to see what they feel is the most valuable use of that property, well, and, it's not and then we can find a reason to put it back on the tax rolls instead of having yeah. it sit well, there without raising any money from it. Doing nothing for us now. Jobs and running businesses uh, are is important like gary having that property i was all for that being turned into an industrial or a because that is industrial zone right it very well could be the most valuable use for that property or maybe they'll say mixed use so, so yeah if so everybody's okay everybody's with it, on forward my question is um if if the study approved says that that it's fit for housing we don't have to do anything we don't have to do it why don't we then we could offload it to a contractor right. and just or, or we could just say because we, i don't think i don't think that that we need to be in the housing oh, business no no okay. no no so right and, and so we don't we're just, even we're just studying it right now we're just to see, see if it if it's feasible mm -hmm. to get houses there and then hook into the wastewater yeah, yeah. and part okay. of part of the study uh, might yeah. suggest the next steps Right. I know other communities. So if we're going to study that parcel, are we going to study the parcel behind the dump also or no? I would think that that would make sense too. That's that's industrial. Which is more which is more feasible. Okay. I, I think we should study both pieces. Okay. And, that, and I'm I'm kind of with Frank that mm -hmm. we ought to go both ways because we do need more business right. in this town right. mm -hmm. to carry some of the tax burden. Yep. You know, if, mm -hmm. if that's a right. place where we could actually get it. Right. Well, and business yeah. brings people. Okay, so exactly. So uh, tell me the parcels that we're that we're interested in is, is the one, the one behind the dump. Right behind okay. the the, the uh, capped landfill. Okay. Yeah, that the, sounds much better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the capped landfill, and then also that um, the one that's the property right. that's the field now. Um, right. Okay. The field and woods up behind yeah. the quarries. Okay, and I don't really, yeah, so I will get with someone from Rutland Regional Planning Commission and we can um, start, they just, start they have process. to write a letter. Right. Yeah, we can start the process. Okay, And then great. we could see awesome. what it's suited for. Yeah. So. That field up back on the side is, is probably the most optimal solar location. Uh, That's for, what we'll for, find for, out. For, for power production for the village of West Paul, even though we can't access that it could be a micro solar there for their okay. own batteries. So yeah, that was my. What three, else do we have? That was my three things for old older business. I'm done. Business. Cool. Anybody else have any older unfinished business? Okay. New business. Public comment. Uh. I just pretty much said that, but Nori lost her cat. If anybody sees a great cat running around West Pollock, she's got signs up all over the place. I saw that on Front Porch Forum also. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. All right. We need to go into executive session now to discuss labor relation agreements with employees. I assume we need a motion for that. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, there you go. Thank you for coming tonight.